If you observe the structure of the descending and ascending limb of Henle's loop, the descending, of a descending limb of Henle's loop is permeable to what? The ascending limb of Henle's loop is permeable to salts. It is permeable to salts. Remember, ascending limb is not permeable to water. It is only permeable to salts and that too salts are being actively pumped out. If that is the case, what is happening in the descending limb? In descending limb, only water is coming outside. And the water, how it is coming outside? It is coming outside by osmosis. The water is coming outside by osmosis because concentration outside is more. The concentration outside is more because of salts. That salts are actually pumped from the ascending limb. What does that mean? In the ascending limb, you can see some salts are pumped out actively. By using energy, some salts are pumped. Now, whichever concentration here is because of the salts which are pumped, they are, they are pumped from the ascending limb of Henry's limb. Now, the concentration inside the medulla is because of the salts which are pumped outside from the ascending limb. Now, because of the salt concentration, huh, this salt concentration in this area, now because of the concentration outside is more, water will leave when, when the water is coming down the descending limb. You can see movement of water outside by osmosis and gradually it becomes isotonic by the time it reaches the hairpin bend of Henley's loop. Same thing is occurring even in the collecting duct also. In the collecting duct here also, because of this salt only, so because of this salt, water goes outside throughout. So you can see because of the salt concentration, water leaves and finally you can see urine which is isotonic to medullary fluid and hypotonic to blood. So movement of water, movement of water from the renal fluid into medullary fluid in the descending limb of Henley's tube and in the collecting duct occurs because of the salts present inside the medullary interstitium. The salts are deliberately maintained. The salts are deliberately maintained by active transport. Now, when the fluid is coming from here, some salts have moved. So, when, when the fluid is moving further outwards, you can see further salts, further salts, further salts. See, fluid is moving from downwards towards the upside. So, when initially salts are being produced, when it is further continuing to move, more salts are produced here and less salts are coming outside in the upper region. As such, you can see in the outer region, there will be less salt. Again. So, first fluid is moving from here. Some salt has come outside. So, fluid has moved to the top. Here some salts are coming outside. When some salts are coming here, out here, some more salts will be coming out here. And when it moves here, further salts are moving, moving out here also. Likewise, when salts are coming outside here, more salts are produced here also. So in that direction, we will see more salts inside and less salts outside. So when more salt concentration is present outside, when you see, when you go into the medullary interstitium, you can see less salt outside and more salt inside. As much salt is present outside, so much of water is pumped outside from the descending limb as well as collecting duct also. And it aids in formation of hypertonic urine. The concentration, the concentration inside the medullary fluid inside the medullary fluid, it is not only because of salt, but also because of urea. Remember, small amount of urea is coming outside. Half of the urea out of 46 and half grams, 23 and half grams. Huh? 
out of the urea which is coming here. Half of that urea is passively diffusing outside from the collecting duct. This urea, it is again entering into the thin segment of ascending limb. Thin segment of ascending limb. So that means this urea enters back here. So it is again, this area it is coming out. So that means that urea is moving here only. But what is the fate of the salt, sodium chloride? If you observe the salt, now out of the salt which has come outside from the ascending limb of Henle's tube, some of the salts will enter into vasa recta. So th this is Henle's tube. This is vasa recta. In the, in the ascending limb of Henle's tube, salts have come outside. These salts will enter into a descending limb, descending limb of vasa recta. So it's running in counter current mechanism to Henle's tube. And that salt, after going into the ascending limb, it again comes outside. So it again, so that means that salt enters, that salt which has come outside from the ascending limb of Henle's loop will enter into this descending limb of Vasa recta, but again is pushed outside in the ascending limb of Vasa recta. That means salts, they are moving here. Urea which has come outside here, it is entering into ascending limb of Henle's loop. Again, it is coming here, it is, so that means urea is moving in this area only. Salt is moving in this area only. So urea and salts will maintain medullary gradient. See, entry of salts into vasa recta and coming out of salts from vasa recta, it is called counter current exchange. Increasing concentration, increasing concentration, this is increasing concentration. Inside medullary fluid, because of salts, it is called counter current multiplier. So counter current multiplier, counter current exchange together called, is together called as counter current mechanism. Because of counter current mechanism, you can see finally formation of concentrated urine. The formation of concentrated urine is possible because of diffusion of water, because of diffusion of water from the collecting duct. That is possible by medullary interstitial gradient. Medullary interstitial gradient is maintained by counter current mechanism present inside Henle's tube and vasa recta, which are present close to each other. Salts are pumped outside because of salts, water is coming outside, and finally, urine is concentrated. Urine concentration is also because of urea which is coming outside, some urea, not all, some amount of urea which is coming outside from the collecting duct.